Thank you very much. Uh, Namaskar, warm greetings, a very pleasant morning. Indeed, a profound privilege and honor to be here with each one of you. A distinguished Professor Sanjay Kumar Malikji, the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Bharati Shanti Niketan, a very distinguished colleague of ours, Dr. Nimai Chan Saha, the Organizing Secretary and also the University Librarian at Vishubharati, Professor Narendra Lehkarji, uh, um, uh, also other colleagues you know, from the Vishubharati uh, University who have been instrumental in having this program today. My very own library and information science professional colleagues who have been able to join from different nooks and parts of India to uh, the six days uh, national workshop. Also the very distinguished uh, other resource persons who would uh, be exchanging their views and on this platform. It's a profound honor and pleasure to be here this morning with each one of you. And the very outset, I would like to sincerely uh, you know, express my gratitude to the organizers, to the distinguished vice chancellor, and to uh, you know a very distinguished colleague, uh, Dr. Nimai Chan Sahaji, for giving me this wonderful opportunity to be here on this platform and to exchange you know, some views on this topic. Uh, at the very outset, let me also congratulate uh, Dr. Nimai Chan Saha, one of the most dynamic uh, library and information science professional who is being very instrumental in contributing uh, a lot much. You know, When we think about him, uh, he is a person who has been really doing the work in a very silent manner, but he has the most impactful work. And this bit brings back today the wonderful memories of holding our NACLIN conference way back in the year 2011. And it's such a pleasure to get connected with many of our colleagues there at uh, Vishwa Bharati. So thank you very much indeed. It's such an honor and pleasure uh, you know, to uh, be associated with an organization which has got one of the most blessed legacy and, uh, and the enormous work you know, which is being carried out by the library in illuminating you know, the path of the information seekers is truly praiseworthy and remarkable. I truly appreciate uh, when we look at, you know, the topic as being uh, also highlighted by our Honorable Vice Chancellor Professor Malik and also by Professor Lehkar, uh, the very topic which has been chosen, you know, the unlocking knowledge open access solutions. Uh, this is something which is a need of the art to sensitize and to work, uh, you know, collaboratively and together. And the most remarkable part, which I'm able to see that this is a national workshop being held in and online, and that too for a period of six days. And as we could see that, and this is for all our colleagues, you know, the professionals who are joining uh, this, you would be able to see the entire program has very wonderfully been conceptualized. It has just touched upon everything when we think about, you know, the open uh, uh, solutions uh, which are being there for the libraries. Every aspect has been well taken care of. I don't foresee that there is anything has been, any room has been left out, you know, by the organizers under the dynamic leadership of Dr. Nimesh and Saha. All the aspects have well taken, being care, well taken care of. So uh, uh, I would just like to, on this platform, today would just like to speak more on uh, adopting open mantra in libraries for harnessing knowledge. And that's what you know. I would just like to put before each uh, one of you some of the views that have been there. Each one of us are fully being aware about it. But I think it's, it's now the time that we have to uh, typically on the ground you know, start doing many of the things. We are already doing it. Enough of the ground has already been covered. But I think there is not much still to cover. And that's the, that really justifies the reason that how the this six days national uh, conf uh, workshop has been conceptualized and I must really congratulate you know all uh, the, the dynamic uh, leadership of Dr. Saha and everyone there at Vishwa Bharati who have put in their efforts together in having each one of us on this wonderful platform today. So the title goes as adopting open mantra in libraries for harnessing knowledge. So when we think about uh, you know uh, the it's it's not only limited to the open access you know accessibility is definitely something which is of vital significance uh, as we as a library professionals think about. But yes, we need to have this open mantra. You know, this is what we need to embrace. We as a professionals have to have this a very strong mindset for uh, you know for imbibing you know those values which really really uh, reflect you know to the core the openness. And when we think about this, uh, when we think about this. I would just like to start off with this wonderful quote that all of us are fully being aware about it. We are drowning in information, but starve for knowledge. 
and this is being said by John Nisbet, and this is a mega trend. So I think many of us uh, would like to, uh, you know, have a glimpse at this book uh, published in 1982 and written by no uh, John Nisbet only called Mega Trends. 10 new directions transforming our lives. And this is you know, uh, more than uh, 40 years ago, this uh, title, which has been uh, uh, 50 years ago, this title, which has been there. And you can well can see that, you know, the kind of, a, uh, you know, what were the new aspects which were coming uh, into those times. And he was the one, you know, who said that, yes, indeed, we are drowning in information, but staff for knowledge. Each one of us, the library and information science professionals, fully understand this 40-year-old statement. And we ourselves find uh, you know, that, yes, we are the ones who handle information all the time, but we, we certainly feel you know, starved for knowledge. We, we certainly look out you know, for the opportunities to turn that information into knowledge. And that really signifies you know, the very reason that we have, you know, the organizers have opted in making the workshop title as Unlocking Knowledge. Uh, and how we need to unlock this knowledge and using the open source solutions. So many of us, you know, may like to really uh, get a chance to have a look at this book of mega trends, and because that really would give us more insights at how 44 years, decades ago, how the trend was being uh, envisaged and how far we have been able to move ahead. The open mantra and libraries, when we think about uh, what we are talking about today, you know, and we have been discussing about it for quite a long time, the libraries have always been the centers, you know, uh, the places which have truly been inspiring and promoting the culture of openness. I think each one of us here on this platform would agree with this fact, whether we as a professionals or as we ask the users community, even our users who have been connected today, they would agree with this fact that libraries remained as the most inspiring places, you know, most uh, the places, you know, uh, promoting this culture of openness. And that's very evident from the fact, you know, that we had our collections being opened. It's an open access uh, collections, the access to our physical collections. We are now talking in terms of the electronic resources and electronic collections. But if we see that our most traditional and conservative services that we have been uh, providing, it has been all in open access. We still remember the times when they used to go to the libraries and then seeing, you know, some collections which were the closed access and you know, our younger generation definitely would be knowing about it, that the closed access wherein the users were not being entitled to directly go and refer to those resources themselves. And it was in closed access. It was only the library professionals, the dealing staff, you know, who have to, you know, provide them. But yes, you know, we have been the ones who have always been promoting that open access. So the libraries have been, since time immemorial, have been promoting that openness even you know, when we have been offering these services in a very, very traditional and in a physical environment. And now we have turned to those times, you know, when we have got, you know, the entire mindsets have been changed and we are more into uh, the spaces which are more opened. And, and libraries always have remained as a hub of equitable access to information by all. Uh, this is yet another aspect, I think, uh, that we need to remember all the time. We need to remember that we have to work. We have been working, but we need to keep on at times also to keep on reminding our own selves that these libraries, you know, these information centers, we these have to get to a lot and these have to have that philosophy and that, uh, you know, a very strong uh, belief that we have to provide an equitable access to information for all, making the services more inclusive in nature. You know, this equitability, and equalness in of information and affordability. Uh, and along with that is also, you know, we have to ensure that they have to remain inclusive. So all, everyone in the society, we need to have a same perception for them and we need to offer, you know, these services, uh, which is just applicable to everyone. The mission of knowledge for all remained as a driving force for the libraries and allies professionals. So knowledge for all, we have to really remain as those agents of change. We have to remain as uh, very committed and highly devoted and dedicated professionals who are always, our mission and vision should always be knowledge for all, irrespective of the geographical boundaries, irrespective of the languages, 
we should be the ones who just are the strong believers in the in in the in in the borderless societies so we have to really contribute towards making those borderless societies and making this you know as a as a knowledge society as a global knowledge society and this all is something achievable and doable each one of us are contributing in some ways but yes it's a need of the hour that these efforts have to be uh, really more concerted and uh, have to you know become uh, more collaborative efforts has to be. This has been, I was happy to see that Professor Malik uh, highlighted this particular, uh, you know, the open uh, access uh, definition as being given by the Budapest Open Access Initiative. Professor Malik in his inaugural uh, speech has uh, mentioned about it. And that is when we think about this way back in the 2002, you know, that how it was being said was that immediate free availability on the public internet permitting any users to read, download, copy, distribute, print, search, or link to the full text of these articles, crawl them for indexing, pass them as data to software, or use them for any other lawful purpose. And that has been by the Budapest Open Access Initiative. And when we think about it, yes, indeed, you know, this is what each one of us aims to do through this. Before we think about it, you know, we are deliberating on unlocking knowledge. We as library professionals remain highly concerned, you know, all the time for it. So we need to also understand, you know, when we think about this, what are the knowledge cycles which are being there? I would just like to put before each one of you some of the very well-known knowledge cycle models. And these are the very strong models. And if we relate it as in library and information science professionals, you know, this really gives us a lot much of vision. This really makes you know, our path much clearer. And we can relate it that the work that we are being engaged with, it is just in relation. This is so uh, you know, in, in complete synergy uh, with the knowledge cycle models you know, which are being prevalent. And one of this model, which is a very prevalent model, is the VIX model. And this model was developed way back in the year 1993. One can, one can well understand that you know, how uh, older has been you know, the work which has has been put in. Uh, the it's not that only the focus has now been made in the last two decades or so. This has been there, you know, for past so many years altogether, and this has been you know characterized by the four major phases. And if we see what were those four major phases, it was uh, the build, hold pool and apply. And when we relate it, you know, to the work that we are doing in the libraries, we can strongly can see the build phase emphasize on the main activities performed by the knowledge workers, such as acquiring, partition, and cod uh, codification of knowledge. This is what we as library and information science professionals have been doing, but we have to really relate it more in terms of the knowledge hold phase to involve the knowledge accumulation in various knowledge-based databases, making it available for access by various search tools. And this, again, we have been doing it. So the build phase, the hold phase, then comes the pool phase, which involves collective actions to access accumulated knowledge by using various um, uh, IT-based technologies, and the apply phase, which involves capitalizing the knowledge, promoting its use for the benefit of the organizations and individuals. So we need to remember and closely work. You know, we have to you know uh, devise our uh, various resources and services, which has to you know uh, if, you know which has to work closely on the these very basic principles that we need to uh, really be uh, keep ourselves focused on these four phases that is a build phase the hold phase the pool phase and the apply and this is in a very constant uh, there's an evolutionary process it's very transformative all the time we are seeing how the technologies are moving how our own perceptions are also you know being into a very constant kind of a transition and but we have to keep a very very close tab on that yet another important uh, model uh, I'd would just like to mention, uh, which was again, uh, you know, in line uh, with the knowledge cycle, and this model was uh, being uh, uh, the Mayer and Zach's knowledge uh, model. And this model was developed in 99, and it focuses on the architecture of information products. Yes, we, uh, each one of us, we are nowadays, we are talking more in terms of making, you know, the information as a commodity, you are, we are working on how these marketing of our information resources can happen and making, and also, you know, packaging the information, that, that's very, very important thing. 
So this was entirely being focused on this architecture of information products where information conceptually includes knowledge and the five stages which were being considered here again. If we really see again, acquisition, refinement, storage and retrieval, distribution and presentation and use. Again, over here, we can just can closely relate it that what was being conceptualized way back in the year, whether in 1993 or 99, this has truly been in line with the main work that we each one of us being in the libraries. But yes, we have to really now gear up and do a little uh, redefine our own roles, uh, our own responsibilities. And here in comes the emerging roles of professionals for unlocking knowledge. David Lankers in the year 2011 has said that the mission of librarians is to facilitate knowledge creation in their own communities. I think we need to keep on reminding our own selves for that, that we have to remain instrumental in helping out in having our community knowledge uh, resources to get developed. It's not only to really become only the users, uh, but also to contribute in the content creation. Uh, we need to have a very very, very, you know, uh, a kind of a very focused approach, you know, especially on the content. We know that, you know, that uh, we have not much ground to cover when we think about a content creation, especially in a country like India, in the Indian languages. We have NEP 2020, which has, uh, you know, germinated. And the basic reason, you know, for that was that we were finding it that there were many of the gap areas which were existing. And it has been one of the most laudable, you know, initiative being taken. And we could see that the kind of, an, uh, you know, uh, the change which is happening now. And we as in library professionals, as I said earlier, we knows no boundaries. We are the ones, you know, who should be the ones who should always believe in removing all the obstacles which are being existing in knowledge sharing. So there can be, there cannot be, you know, uh, there's no room, in fact, you know, for having any kind of in barriers for knowledge sharing. We should always be the one who should keep ourselves focused on removing those barriers. So we have to really work more as a facilitators for knowledge creation, the roles are not only to tap the explicit knowledge, the recorded knowledge, which is there maybe in the form of books, in the journals, in any kind of a recorded medium, but also we need to work more for tapping the tacit and indigenous knowledge. And this is a very important aspect. We are knowing it that there are oral traditions, for example, in, in, in our country, you know, and there is, it moves from generation to generation. If you're not able to tap that indigenous knowledge, it will be lost forever. You know, we are depriving then our, you know, our future generations and not, uh, you know, to know about it. So it's very, very important. So when we think about, you know, this unlocking knowledge, we really have to go that extra mile, go that extra mile and see to it, not only the explicit, we, I think we have to get out of our libraries uh, as a professionals and have to think about where all this knowledge is available. And this can be there, you know, more as a tacit knowledge with the people around. And we need to see to it that we are able to, you know, uh, capture that, you know, we need to cultivate and then harvest that knowledge. It's very, very important enough. There is a need to transform professionals as knowledge workers and librarians as, as li and libraries as knowledge hubs. I think we need to really tell it to our own selves that it's not only as an information science workers that we have to work, we have to work now and get into our new roles more as a knowledge workers and libraries have to turn into the as knowledge centers, as knowledge hubs. I would also like to draw your attention to the National Knowledge Commission, which was constituted in way back in 2005, which also strongly felt the need for easy access to knowledge, creation and preservation of knowledge systems, dissemination of knowledge and better knowledge services, equitable access to knowledge by all sections of society and libraries as gateways to knowledge. Many of us who have seen this report, you would see that on the title page itself, it's, remain, it's being written, libraries as gateway to knowledge. And this, we have to really on the ground work to make our libraries as a gateway to knowledge. It's very, very important aspect. Now we would like to now we think about the open mantra. So when we think about the open mantra, the various works that we are being doing it in our libraries, we have to really ensure that we are the ones, you know, who are promoting and use. So content creation using open source software quickly. Uh, you know, we have the entire six days are being devoted wherein very in-depth discussions by the leading experts are going to happen, you know, and touching upon all these, you know, various uh, aspects. And just would like to quickly withdraw, 
your attention for the library automation softwares. Everyone here now we are aware about Koha. We do have Evergreen and we do have Opals also as the other uh, you know, open source uh, library automation softwares. Electronic resource management software, I think in a country like India, we have to work more on this uh, because for your electronic resources, you are subscribing to a lot much of content, you know, the electronic content, and there are very wonderful state-of-the-art, you know, softwares from the open source community, which is being available. And I would just like to draw your attention for Coral, Cuffs, and also ERMAs. And Coral and Cuffsman, they are from Simon Fraser University and also from other universities in the US who have put in their efforts in Canada and US. And this, these are the one of the most sophisticated electronic resource management softwares. You're subscribing to a lot much of content from various publishers. Users are have to go to the various platforms to access. If you are adopting these ERM softwares under one single interface, you can bring together all the metadata you know, of these publishers and users in one go will be able to see irrespective of from where which publisher is offering that content and it becomes a very very you know smooth and easy access to information by our users digital library softwares we are aware of these space and imprints Content management or learning management softwares, Joom, uh, Line, Drupal, and reference management, definitely, we all are aware, Mendeley, Zotero, and EndNote. And yes, open source uh, operating systems, the Linux, you know, uh, which is being there, and which all, we, we are able to see all these open source tools which are being there, they are all being available uh, onto the Linux platform, they are being uh, ported onto that. Let me quickly now go to the content access on open access to e-resources. So firstly, I would just like to mention about, you know, when we think about an open access, uh, open access to what, you know, we are, we are concerned about the resource, the content, what are they going to access? So this open access to the open access e-resources, I would just firstly would like to also mention about this open data. I think we, the librarians and librarian information science professionals have to really now work more in promoting this. And this is the data which is being openly accessible, exploitable, editable, and shared by anyone. And this is more under this I license, under the open access license, you know, this uh, data is being available. Not much of the government data, we call it as OGD, that is the open government data is being there. You may like to refer to this data.gov.in, which contains the data sets. You know, these are the data sets of the various ministries and departments. Even if you see that across the globe, all the various, you know, national governments have got their data now available as an open data. And that's everything is just being available, but we need to really make these things also known to our users uh, who are being there. And this is again, a single point of access. So the entire government data of the various countries, they are being uh, available. And there is also a need for what we call the unification. The unification of these, you know, individual national government data, there is a need also for unifying it. Uh, there is a need that we bring them all together as we think about the borderless societies, we think about, you know, connecting the nations, it's very, very important that we create, you know, a kind of a global platform, irrespective of from which country it's coming in, all the data should be available as a single portal. Also, we are aware about it, how the world is now moving, how the scholarly and the academic world is moving, how we have now this open science and open research, which are now the emerging trends. And, and the world is now moving, it's becoming more open and every Everyone is wanting to be a part of it. And the open science and open research being funded by the government and by the other, you know, funders. And everyone wants, as being also communicated uh, by uh, our distinguished Vice Chancellor, Professor Malik, the visibility that it's it's getting. The research is getting, you know, uh, uh, visible. Uh, you know, those who are being the experts, the subject matter experts are getting visibility. And it's leading to more better collaborations and connections. Open access e-journals, we have DOAG and all so many leading publishers are now putting their containers in open access, open access books we have UAAB, open knowledge repositories and open access repositories. I think there's a greater need that each one of us contributes significantly in developing these knowledge repositories. And I would just like to draw your attention to this COIR, C-O-A-R, which is in Confederation of Open Access Repositories, uh, which has an, it's an international organization with over 120 members and partners representing various libraries, universities, research institutions, and it brings together. You can just can go you know, to their site you know, and you can be able 
to see the kind of a work you know that they are doing and this is also they help out you know in aligning uh, uh, in uh, the various policies and practices and to make it as a global voice for the repository community so this is a very important aspect some of you would be knowing we have dr vishali dadwate who is doing it from india for the square she's coordinating for the entire south asia and it's a very significant work that they are doing it for making these open knowledge repositories oers everyone is being aware about it how we are all being moving now you know whether we talk about open educational resources for teaching, learning, and research. We have got the MOOCs, and I'm very happy to see that a lot much of many uh, of the sessions, they are being also there. One or two sessions I was able to see the, in our program schedule, you know, that they are being on uh, uh, the OERs. And this is, again, under the license for uh, Creative Commons. And you would be aware, you can even can go and see OER Commons, which is a single uh, window searching for all the, you know, uh, the open educational resources, which is being available. If you go to OER Commons, you will be able to see that. Open source discovery tools, I will quickly, because I can see it's 11.30 right now, I'll quickly like to, you know, uh, now be a little more faster. So open source discovery tools, we find and Blacklight. We find in India, yes, we are using a number of institutions uh, are using this as a single window searching, more sophisticated, federating searching and all that. And, and again, it comes from the open source domain. And Blacklight is yet another one. And it's it's also would like to just share that we are able to also notice a number of leading, um, you know, uh, 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 publishers or for that matter some of the IT companies and they they have their you know proprietary softwares uh, which they are giving it against a substantially very high price products. But if we really see their backends, they are using the open source. So I think we as a library professionals need to really ensure that we are uh, you know uh, we remain um, you know. We should be aware about it that, yes, it's an open source, it's all being free, and you have to just simply deploy it. So uh, these are the two leading ones when we think about the discovery tools. So open access publishing models, we are aware about. I just quickly would like to see, because of paucity of time, the gold OA, the green OA, the delayed open access that we also have it, you know, wherein the content gets available. But yes, after a set embargo period, and there are other models also, including the bronze OA, the li uh, library OA, and also the diamond OA. And they're all being governed, you know, by the various copyright and license agreements of Creative Commons. Now, I would just like to quickly mention about the open standards. So open standards, um, please remember, when we think about the open source softwares, we think about many of the open source technologies, which one of the most important aspects also remain, are we adopting, are we using the open standards? There is a greater need, you know, to look into these aspects also. And open standards are the one which really helps you, it facilitates, you know, this interoperationability when we think about between the diverse systems across the various systems and also you know the ease of your data migration because from one system to the other you have to do it unless and until the standards are the same so that's the reason we say that there has to be if you are adopting something from the open source community you also have to see to it that they are adopting to the open standards then only this interoperability uh, features uh, and interoperability can happen three key characteristics of open standards as identified by Coil in 2002 are, anyone can use the standards to develop the software, anyone can acquire the standards for free or without significant cost, and the standard has been developed in such a way that anyone can participate. So open standard, that's how anyone can really can deploy it and can make a use of it. Open standard is a standard which is not encumbered by a patent, does not require proprietary software, and can be used by anyone without any cost. So that's the reason we need to be very sure about it, that whenever we are thinking about all this, that this must be the open standards should be involved in it. It's not that something which is a proprietary one for which you have to pay an extra cost, no. So when we are adopting any of the open source technologies, whether the software or for that matter anything, we need to really see to it that the foundation has been set on the open standard. So this is yet another important aspect that we should think about, you know, keeping it in our mind. Now, uh, this is last but one slide, issues and challenges. When we think about, you know, embracing and adopting, you know, these open mantra in our libraries, what are the major, all of us knows about the basic ground realities, uh, you know, that what really happens. Availability of technical exp expertise for implementing open source software in the libraries. Competency development for the trained manpower, it's very, very important. 
Building infrastructure and support for long-term sustainability. It's very important thing. You may have deployed it. Certain staff has done it. You know, the staff have moved. No one else, you know, to take care of it. So it's very, very important. You have got a funding from somewhere. One time it has been done. Now you are not, uh, you know, able to, you know, sustain it. So we have to really put in our focus also to have adequate infrastructures and also support for a long-term sustainability. Awareness among the scholarly community for, o, uh, for OA publishing. Please read it as OA Publishing. For OA Publishing, you know, we need to also make our research and scholarly community aware about it. Better knowledge sharing avenues to be made available at a global level. Very important thing. Globally, there's a lot much of work which is being done, but there has to be some good, better knowledge sharing uh, avenues to be made available. Global best practices in implementing and embracing open tools and technologies to be highlighted. I think there's a greater need that everyone to be there. And that's how this, uh, the, uh, the last slide for the presentation, the need for library collaborations and partnerships in the age of openness. And when we think about it, there's a greater need undoubtedly for more innovative thinking and consistent efforts centered around building up global library collections for engaging in uh, collaborations and partnerships to strengthen the open movement in libraries. And these, what we call it now as open collaborations, open partnerships, everyone is just being, you know, it's, it's, it's just open for anyone and everyone to just participate participate in this. We need to co-create the future of libraries together, coming together, working together with the open-mindedness in this age of openness. That's what the message goes. And the message is that we, all of us have to come together, work together, and then to see to it. And that very important thing within very open-mindedness, you know, in this age of openness, to co-create the future of the libraries that each one of us really desire to see that each one of us envision and envisage, but yes, we have to work together for it. Lastly, would like to mention that do remember to celebrate what we call the International Open Access Week from October 21st to 27, 2024. And I would like to mention to Dr. Saha that we may like to, you know, do some programs and would certainly like to see to it if we can have some collaborations happening in that. And thank you very much for your attention. It has been a pleasure uh be on this platform today and thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity once again uh, dr nimai and thank you very much indeed thank you.